is Go Healthy Live, and we have a treat for you today. We're going to be listening to and watching AJ Cook, Chef AJ Cook. And if you haven't experienced this yet, you're in for a big treat. She is amazing. She's the host of the TV series Healthy Living with Chef AJ. She is a chef and culinary instructor. She has so many books now, they're really coming out faster. She has uh, Unprocessed, which is one of my favorite books because it has disappearing lasagna in there. And I use that for special occasions like holidays and birthdays. It's so good. I, it really goes so fast because I eat most of it. Then we have The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss. Oh my goodness, that's fantastic, especially for people who are trying to take off the extra weight. She is, she uh, is the, or was the executive pastry chef for Sante restaurant. And she was famous for her sugar, oil, salt, and gluten-free desserts. And I guess she has a new book coming out called A Date with Desserts. I can't wait to get that one. She runs the ultimate weight loss program where she's helped hundreds, I would say probably thousands maybe, of people get the body they want uh, after learning how to eat what she tells us to eat. So she was inducted into the Vegetarian Hall of Fame, I think in 2016, correct me if that's not right. And she loves to say that her IQ is higher than her cholesterol. How many of you can say that? I mean, that is amazing. And she's going to tell us a little bit about her story too. But we're in for a treat on the food she's going to make. She told me she has not made it online before. So welcome to, oh my gosh, I have to tell you about Chef AJ one thing though. She could be a diva, but she isn't. What she does and her husband, Charles, is they push people up. You know, wherever they are, they promote other people. And people who are secure in themselves do that. And they do that. And AJ is amazing with that. So I just wanted to add that in because these two are support team for me personally as well. I, I don't know, I wouldn't wanna be in this life without them to tell you the truth. They are just amazing. So with that, I'm gonna give you our dear chef, AJ. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction, Linda. And it's true, I've got to crank the books out because the older I get, the more books I got to get out. And I love promoting people because I want to retire someday and I want to just <laughs> hand over the torch to somebody else. But thank you so much for having me. And I'm going to be making four recipes, basically breakfast, lunch, dinner, and dessert. And I, I, it's not completely accurate to say I've never taught these recipes, but I've never put them on YouTube or anywhere like that. And I purposely picked one of the recipes recipes just in honor of your wonderful keynote speaker, Dr. McDougall. So what I'm going to be making the dinner or the entree recipe is one of my favorite recipes from my new book, Own Your Health, along with Glenn Merzer. It's actually his book. I wrote the recipes, but all the recipes will be from that book. And it's going to be the double potato panini pizza. So it's really, really delicious. I'm also going to be making a, my favorite salad, which is it's called Christmas kale salad. I should have named it something else because it really, it, I don't want people to think you should only eat it at Christmas. I'm going to be making one of Charles's favorite breakfast, the overnight oats. And for dessert, one of my very favorite things, which is called jam bars. But jam bars can also double for a breakfast. So I want to start with the panini crust because that's going to take about a half hour to cook. And what I've done right here is, yes, you can always buy potatoes and grate them yourself. But so many of the stores now have a very clean product, which is just organic frozen hash browns, nothing in it but organic potatoes, no dextrose hidden there or oil or salt. I got these at Sprouts, but other stores have a brand called Cascadian Farms where you can find this as well. And to make the cooking time less, I defrosted it and I put it in this little nut milk bag and I squeezed out all the water. This is going to help it cook faster. And so what I'm gonna do is right here, I have my panini press, if you wouldn't mind tipping the camera, that I've already preheated, and I'm just gonna lift it up, and I'm just gonna put these potatoes on it. And by the way, this is just delicious by itself. I'm using this as a pizza crust, but this would make just almost a delicious cracker-like uh, item that you could have with really any meal, great with a soup. You wanna be careful because it's, it is hot. So we're just gonna move the potatoes around. Now you certainly can do this from the bag right from the freezer. It will completely work. 
it's just going to increase the cooking time. That's why I squoze out, if that's a word, all the water. Now, what do you do if you don't have a panini press? Well, this would also work in a standard waffle iron, but the reason I prefer a panini press for this recipe is because it makes it flatter and it's a crust, but a waffle iron will work. I've done it and it's not a problem if that's all you have. I don't know if you could just cook it in the oven. I don't think it would get as crispy, but you know, you can get a waffle iron at Walmart for less than $20. Panini presses usually run around 40 to 60. So all I do, as I close it, let's see if there's a little thing to lock it. There we go. And let's just set it, forget it. And while that's cooking, I'm going to move on to the dessert because that does take about 40 minutes to cook. One of the secrets to any kind of cooking, especially healthy cooking, is to be prepared. There's a term in French called mise en place, which basically means everything in its place. If you wouldn't mind tipping the camera so I can show them my mise en place right here, I know what I was making. So I have all the ingredients already out and already measured. That saves so much time when you're making recipes. Now this recipe calls for ripe bananas and my bananas just weren't ripe enough. And since I'm using bananas instead of sugar, I'm not even using dates in this recipe, I wanted really ripe bananas. They weren't ready, but I always have bananas in the freezer. So I took them out this morning, I defrosted them. They're nice and soft and now I'm just gonna plop them in the bowl. And so this is going to be basically my sweetness for this recipe. I'm using this pan here. This is a silicone nine inch square pan. This is my favorite, but you could use a different shape if you wanted. And I'm going to add my ingredients to these bananas. But first I'm gonna take my potato masher, which we're going to be using in a minute or so for the mashed potatoes and just kind of mash up bananas. Just make sure when you freeze your bananas, you wait till they're nice and ripe, not quite black, but lots of brown spots so that all that sweetness is there. And always make sure you peel them before you freeze them and freeze them not touching on a plate because otherwise they'll stick together. It's really hard to get the peel off if you have not done that. I'm gonna add my applesauce. This is just organic unsweetened applesauce and you can make your own if you have an Instant Pot or you could also buy it and that's okay. You can just come back to me if you like. I've got my oats pre-measured. I'm just using an organic gluten-free rolled oat. If you're not gluten-free, it doesn't have to be gluten-free, but I just you know so many people are these days. And this is millet that I ground into a flour because I find that oats can sometimes have a gummy texture and by putting a little bit of ground millet, it offsets it. And then I also have my spices in here, which are cinnamon and vanilla powder. And that's it, pretty basic ingredients. And this basically is a baked oatmeal, which you can make in advance, slice up, even freeze, and then you have breakfast every day. Or in my case, I like this with a cup of tea for dessert. And it's really easy to make. You don't need one of those electric mixers or anything like that. Now, I like to add fruit to this. So berries are my favorite. I've done this with cherries and blueberries. You can really do it with any fruit you like but I'm going to use blueberries today. And I like these little tiny wild blueberries only because they're so small and they disperse really well. So it's like you get more blueberries in every bite. But when blueberries are in season fresh, I have often used fresh ones as well. So I'm just gonna look for my little spatula and mix this up. Very easy to make. I, I'm not kidding, Charles, my husband has made these. It's, it's so easy. This is based on a recipe that came out a couple of years ago in the wonderful annual meal planner for Forks Over Knives. And I just tweaked it a little bit to make it my own, especially when it came to the topping. So we could just bake this right now and have delicious baked oatmeal. But what made their recipe so special was by putting some jam on top. And I'm gonna do the same thing, but I am gonna be putting a lot more jam on top because that's the sweet part that Charles likes. It's almost like a frosting. But what was genius about it is they didn't put it in afterwards. They put it in and it got baked on top. Now, as far as what to put on top, you can buy jams that have no sugar already. And I'm gonna show you a brand that I use from Trader Joe's. Almost every store has that. But you could also make your own. In my second book, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss, there's a recipe for chia jam. And all you really do is take a fruit like blueberries, fresh or frozen, and blend it with chia seeds for thickening, and boom, you have jam. 
So I like to mix it till it's fully incorporated. And what I like also about using the frozen berries is because it turns it purple. And you can probably tell by my chef coat that purple is my favorite color. So now I'm just gonna put it in my pan. What's so nice about silicone is everything I'm making is not only whole food plant-based, unprocessed, free of sugar, oil, salt, but it's also low in fat. And so when you don't use any fat or oil in baking, it's really important that either you're gonna use parchment paper, which is fine, except it's kind of wasteful to the environment to do that, or just get yourself a piece of silicone bakeware. These come in almost every shape sizes. You could probably find them at Walmart. Bed Bath & Beyond, for certain, you can find them at Amazon. This only costs about $7, so they're not expensive, and they last a really long time, and they clean up so easy. The truth is, is once you stop using oil, everything cleans up easy. So see how easy that was? As I said, I could bake it right now, but what's going to make these extra special is by adding the jam. So this is a super fruit spread from Trader Joe's that has nothing but the fruit and some fruit juice concentrate. So it has no added sugar, but it's super sweet. I'll be sure to open my jars in advance. And again, you can make your own, but I like to get this flavor. Sometimes what I do when I want to get really fancy is I'll take a flavor like this and a flavor like raspberry, and I'll actually make a checkerboard design. So like every other square is a different flavor. So that's kind of fun to do. And I like to rotate the flavors on top. So sometimes I've used fruit juice sweetened peach jam, pear jam, orange marmalade, raspberry, strawberry. And so it never gets boring because I'm changing up the fruit that's on the inside and the fruit that's on top. And you just spread this on and then it's gonna get nice and hot and bubbly and it's gonna kind of bake into the jam bars. Now, of course, we don't measure our food on the plant-based diet. We eat till we're satisfied because yeah. when you understand what you're supposed to eat, which is fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, and if you can afford the calories, some nuts, seeds, and avocado, you don't have to worry about when you eat or why you eat or how much you eat. But for my stomach and for my husband's stomach, we get about 16 bars out of this. So. And imagine if you did this in advance, you could eat one or two bars, depending for breakfast. You could have breakfast made for a whole week. But as I mentioned, I, I don't eat at breakfast, first of all. And if I did, I don't eat sweets that early in the day. So for me, this is just a wonderful treat after lunch or dinner or both. And I like to have it with a cup of tea. And it is just absolutely delicious. Even regular people, meaning people that aren't following the whole food plant-based diet have told me they like this recipe. And one person said, this was worth the price of the book just for this recipe. <laughs> so there we have it. And now I'm going to put it in my oven. I'll be right back. I have already preheated it at 350 degrees. And I wanna give you guys a piece of advice on ovens. Please make sure that you calibrate your oven. And I mean by that people, a lot of times people say, hey, I followed your recipe exactly and it didn't come out. And I'm like, is your oven calibrated? No, you can get an oven thermometer for like $10 at a hardware store. And I said many, many years ago, I was an apartment manager. And every time a resident would move, they would get a new oven and they would say, this isn't working. I cooked it forever. And I would come down with my oven thermometer and calibrate it. It could be off by as much as 50 degrees. So what you need to know is what your 350 is, because anytime you work at a restaurant, especially I can tell you as a pastry chef, there's always a thermometer hanging there. Chefs have a thermometer here. So know what your true 350 is, because if you find it's too dry, your oven is probably a little high if it's, if it's stuck, if it didn't take if it didn't cook probably it's a little bit low okay so now we are going to make the mashed potato part for the so, so i had to do this part in advance because i find that if i have too many plugs the power blows and that's not so great but i will tell you exactly what i did to cook these potatoes so these are organic yukon gold potatoes they come in three, four, or five pound bags, depending on what store you get them at. And they, they are great, but they're so buttery. They're very quick to cook. I cook them in my eight quart Instant Pot electric pressure cooker simply by putting two cups of water in the bottom and then putting the basket in. Now, the truth is, is you don't really need the basket because I'm going to mash them in the leftover potato water. A lot of people use plant milk in their mashed potatoes and that's absolutely fine. There's just something 
like magical about this starchy water. I find it works really well for mashed potatoes. So I'm just going to use the water. Water's free and I've already got it. And so I love this basket though in general for cooking in my Instant Pot because this doesn't get hot. I can lift it right up. And I cooked it for 10 minutes and I let it come down to pressure naturally. And so now what I'm going to do is just to be safe, I am going to take this water out just because in case it's too much, you know, you can always add, but you can't subtract. So I'm gonna pour this water aside. And then I'm gonna place my potatoes back in my Instant Pot insert. I'm going to mash them with the water, but I'm also gonna add something really important. And what that is, is roasted garlic. You can add garlic powder, but there, you can add raw garlic, but there's something about roasted garlic that's just really unbelievable. It's mellow, it's creamy. This is only a half a cup because that's all I had. I wish I had a full cup because that's how much I like it. People sometimes that get indigestion from garlic will find that if they roast it, they don't. And so what I'm doing is I'm gonna mash these potatoes. This is, I, I have a, a biceps uh, here. So if, if it looks like it's difficult, it's not because the potatoes, it's because my arm's no good. Usually Charles would do all this for me, but we're just going to start by adding a little water. You can always add more. Now, sometimes I'll actually add, believe it or not, a whole bag of frozen corn to this that has been defrosted. I like the fire roasted corn, and that's just a delicious way to make mashed potatoes because there's nothing like having starch with your starch. But because we have so many other vegetables that are going on this pizza, I decided to skip the corn this time. Yukon Golds, I think, are my favorite potato for mashing because they're just so creamy and they're so easy to mash. And the roasted garlic, I wish you guys could smell it. Now, let me tell you how I roasted the garlic and why I did it in advance. As I mentioned, we've already got three plugs going or two and another one coming, and I didn't want to risk the pressure blowing. But basically, I have a little thing called an air fryer, and I simply take the garlic cloves that are already peeled that I buy, and I just put it in there for about 10 minutes at 370, and that's how I roast my garlic. And for me, it comes out perfect every time. So you're just, I'm just going to keep mashing until these are the right consistency. I'm looking for like, I don't want them liquidy, but I want them sort of spreadable. And again, if you would prefer to use plant milk, please go right ahead. But oh, they, they just cream up so nicely. I know a lot of people like other kinds of potatoes, and that's fine to make mashed potatoes. But I think the Yukon is unparalleled for creaminess. So that wasn't too hard at all. And I really try to use ingredients that people can find anywhere in any market. So if you're saying, well, my store doesn't, have, my city doesn't have a sprout, I can't find the hash brown. All you have to do is grate the potatoes yourself, but realize you're gonna, they're gonna be a lot more watery. So you're gonna have to drain them, either you know, in paper towels or using some cheesecloth or the bag that I had, believe it or not, we call it a nut milk bag, but that bag is actually from the paint store. It was 99 cents. So again, I'm going to just add a little bit more just so it's a little creamy. It's a good thing that I did is just plop it in the water because that would be too wet. Another great idea what you can do with leftover mashed potatoes, and I probably will have some left over from this pizza because I'm only making enough for me and Charles to eat for dinner. If you can place it, let's say, in a loaf pan overnight, let it chill and the next day slice it into steaks and make mashed potato steaks in your air fryer. So I love the idea of cooking once and eating multiple times. So our mashed potatoes are ready and I'm just gonna save this water because you know what, you never know. I can always throw it away later if I don't use it. And just to make it a little bit easier, I'm gonna transfer my mashed potatoes to this bowl. And then I'm gonna show you some different ways that we can top it. Just looking for my spatula. See my purple spatula anywhere? They always say, ah, here it is. They always say hide things in plain sight. Let me just rinse it off. It's got oats on it. I'm not sure how good blueberry oats would taste in the mashed potatoes. Now, if you don't already have an Instant Pot, please consider getting one because it will really make your life and cooking easier. And my recommendation is to get the eight quart or the 10 quart. This is the eight quart because the truth is you can always do a smaller recipe in a big instant pot, but you can't do a big one in a small. That said, I do have the three quart instant pot and I love it. And I use it every day to cook our greens for breakfast. And that's the one I travel with. But if I'm making soups or stews or chilies, 
you want the big one. But I, I don't know if you can just see how creamy these are, almost like a buttercream frosting. And there's no dairy in them at all. It's just the nature of the potato. Potato is the most perfect food, in my opinion. If somebody said you could only live on one food the rest of your life, I'd probably pick the sweet potato over the potato, but it would definitely be some kind of a potato. So there we have it. We've got our nice creamy mashed potatoes. And now we're just going to wait for this to finish and then we'll assemble the pizza. And while we do that, I'm going to make breakfast. So why am I making breakfast at the same time I'm making dinner? Well, there's an old saying, fail to plan, plan to fail. And the most important thing in my opinion in eating healthy is having the food ready. And so I'm only going to do two days worth because, you know, I work at home and it's not so hard for me to do things every few days, uh, you know, as far as batch cooking is concerned. But if you have a different type of schedule, you really can make enough of these for the entire week. These are easy overnight oats because they're really easy to make and they're oats. So in my little container, I have my oats. And of course, I'll give you all the recipes. This happens to be two cups for the amount that I'm making. And I've already measured out my liquid. It's, it's a really easy recipe to remember because it's everything is two. It's two cups of oats. It's two cups of fruit. It's two cups of liquid. It's two teaspoons chia seeds and it's two teaspoons of cinnamon. So I'm going to put my cinnamon and chia seeds in. The reason I'm using chia seeds isn't so much that they're healthy, which they are high in omega-3 fatty acids, of course, and good for you for that. I'm using them because they're an excellent natural thickener. And what's going to happen is when I put these in the refrigerator overnight, it's going to make a pudding-like consistency. So I'm going to add my two cups of fruits. I'm using frozen cherries, organic. I'm going to be using this jar just for a nice presentation. And then my two cups of liquid. Now, what cup kind of liquid you use is going to be up to you. Now, my husband Charles likes things on the sweeter side. So I'm using one cup of unsweetened oats, excuse me, one cup of unsweetened apple juice and one cup of non-dairy milk, your choice. If you were making for somebody that didn't have a sweet tooth, you could just use water. And what's nice about this recipe is you could actually make this in your hotel room simply by putting the oats and the chia seeds and the cinnamon in a little Ziploc bag. And when you got to your destination, adding some type of liquid and maybe even just an apple, banana, or any kind of cut up fruit you could get at the airport or your 7-Eleven. Now, it is very liquidy right now, but that's because it takes some time for the chia seeds to thicken it. And what I like to do is I like to put it in this jar. This is called either a ball jar, a curd jar, a bell jar. You get these everywhere from Walmart to the regular grocery store. And then I just put it in. I'm using this funnel just because it doesn't get all over my counter that way. This is a gift from my friend Jen, because I was always spilling it on the counter. Now, for my husband, Charles, this is two days worth of breakfast, two servings, but you might get four, you might get one, and he likes to eat it cold, but you could cook it, because, uh, you, you know, think about it, rolled oats are really already cooked in a way, they have been flattened and steamed and flattened again, so you can eat them, quote, raw, because the fact they've been steamed, which is like being cooked, but if you like to heat it up in the stove or the microwave, you absolutely can. And this is very easy to make. And again, we like to change the, the fruit up. I buy the organic frozen fruit at Trader Joe's. So maybe he'll have uh, blueberry one day. He'll have cherry another. He'll have raspberry. It, we can mix it up. All kinds of flavors. I've made him carrot cake. And it's nice because this fits perfectly in this jar. It's a beautiful color. And then all we have to do is put it in the refrigerator. And then tomorrow, once it sets up, it's going to be thick. It's going to be a very lovely pudding-like consistency. And that didn't really even take five minutes to make. So while we're waiting for the pizza crust to be cooked and for the jam bars to finish baking, we are going to make my favorite salad. And for that, I'm going to use a blender. So I, I've done workshops on batch cooking and everybody has a different system depending of course on their preferences and schedules. So the way my batch cooking works when I'm not doing a demonstration for somebody else is the minute I get close to being out of something, I make it again. So it just, it worked out perfectly that after we had our salad for lunch, this is all we had left. Not enough for another serving for either of us. So I'm going to be making that salad dressing right now. This is my favorite and it's called lemon poppy seed dressing. It has only, I believe, five ingredients, which I have pre-measured in advance, but they're simple and they're easy to find. So I'm using the bottled lemon juice. 
but you please use fresh if you have it. And if you do use fresh, also consider using the outside of the lemon, which is called the zest. So I'm just using this nice organic lemon juice that I got at Sprouts, I've seen it at Whole Foods too. And this is 50-50 lemon juice and water. I'm actually making a double recipe because my feeling is, is make the largest that you can. You don't want to just make like a small amount of food. You want to make as much as you can, eat some, freeze some, and maybe give some to a neighbor. I've got my dates for sweetness and I soaked them in a little bit of boiling water because they were particularly hard this time. And then mustard. I know that Linda loves mustard. I've been to her house and she puts it on her cold Yukon gold potatoes, which is actually delicious. And so I'm going to, since I'm making a double recipe, I'm going to be using four tablespoons. Now, what kind of mustard you use is up to you. I just recommend that you like it. And by that, I mean, not all mustards are created equal. Some people actually like something called Grey Poupon, which to me does not taste very good. It's very sharp and vinegary, and I don't care for it. If you like it, you could certainly put it in here, but I prefer a more mild mustard, which is why I'm using the West Bray mustard. This one happens to have no salt. It's, I learned about it at True North, and it's very mild. So that's why I'm using that one. It's personal preference, and you can get it very easily online. Oh, so I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend everything except for the seeds. I'm going to add them in a little bit. You need to do the dance, AJ. <laughs> yeah. That looks pretty good. And again, it's not thick yet. The chia seeds take a little time to work. I've already measured out my chia seeds and my poppy seeds. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, it, this is my favorite dressing. I mean, I keep, I, every time we try another dressing, whether it's store-bought or homemade, our family goes back to this. One. So I'm just gonna blend briefly. I'm going to make that one. Yeah. One of the things I like to do with my salads, and I just want to show you something. One of the things about being prepared is to always have salad ready. And so what we do is we have this thing called the Holland Bowl, and we chop these big, beautiful salads. Charles does this every week. Now, this has pounds and pounds of greens already in it, but by chopping it, we've reduced it, which we've made it more delicious to eat, easier to chew. And when we do this, we eat a lot more salad, but we're actually going to be using the dressing on a little bit different salad right now, which I'm going to make, but I just wanted to show you that. Now, Charles in general doesn't like things spicy and I do. So if I was making this just for myself, I put in a little bit of something called jalapeno powder just to kick it up a notch. But since he doesn't like that, what I do is I just sprinkle that on my chopped salad instead so that everybody can have this dressing. What's it called? What powder? It's called jalapeno powder. You can get it oh. at spice stores like, like uh, local spicery. Sometimes they have it at Costco. It's not that hard to find. But, or, okay. you know, it doesn't have to be the powder. I could just, you could just cut up a jalapeno very thin yeah. and slice, very delicious on a salad. So I love a brand of vinegar called California balsamic. And I'm going to actually be using that to finish my pizza. But what mm -hmm. I do is when the bottle is empty, I wash it in the dishwasher, the label comes off, and then it ends up being the perfect size to house my salad dressing, which I'm now going to pour in here. And as I say, as you can see it pouring, you go, oh, this isn't thick enough. The chia seeds will do the thickening magic. If you, buy, if you want it thicker, you can use a little bit more chia seeds. If you want it thinner, you can use a little bit less. But what I love to make this, to save all my California balsamic vinegar bottles, and then I actually give this well, not right now, I mean, because we don't have company, but when we used to have that thing called company come over, like if people came over for dinner, <laughs> the old days. Almost, yeah, almost invariably, they would say, so I'm just going to put this in the other bottle. They would say, oh my God, this is the best salad dressing. And what uh -huh. I had already done is prepared a bottle for every single guest. So every guest would go home with a bottle of this dressing. Oh, how lovely. So yeah, and that way I feel like I'm recycling too. So we're going to use this on the Christmas kale salad, which I said, I wish I had not named that because there was a reason I named it that, which I'll explain, but I'm actually going to be using arugula instead of kale. Now, the trick to getting people to eat greens, in my opinion, well, there's a couple of tricks. One is to, of course, have a delicious dressing like this, but also if somebody is not used to the bitterness of greens, what you want to do is get the baby. And by that, I mean, they sell baby kale and baby arugula. 
which is much more mild than the grown-up version. So what I'm going to be using is baby arugula. And I'm just making a little bit for myself for dinner. So I've got my baby arugula. And I've got some red bell pepper. And when I'm doing this for Christmas, what I'll do is so that it looks like Christmas lights, I will get a yellow bell pepper, an orange bell pepper, and a red one. So I'm cutting it really, really small using this tool called the Vidalia Chop Wizard. So it's really, really small. This is a really cool tool because it also, if you need the measurement, has the measurements on the side. I did most of it in advance, so I'm just gonna show you how easy this is to use to chop things. If you would please tip the camera. So basically, it just chops things and they come with wow, different was, size grains. Yeah. yeah, it's fantastic. You can use it for carrot, for potato, for sweet potato, for What's onion. What's the name of that again? This is called the Vidalia Chop Wizard. This will, this will cost about $20 at Bed Bath & Beyond. You can use the wow. coupon. And it's just to me so much easier. And oh, yeah. you can see how, look how perfect and look oh, how little, perfect, I yeah. love it. So that was easy. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in our salad. And again, you don't have to measure, put as much or as little as you want, but you can imagine how pretty this looks for Christmas. You've got the green and the red, and these to me look like little Christmas lights. So again, uh -huh. put as little as much. Now I'm using my hand and I understand that, but guess what? I'm the one that, you know, it's funny when I do my YouTube, people criticize me for things that like, I'm the one eating this. This is going to be uh -huh. my serving. So it's okay <laughs> that I'm using my hand because otherwise I have to use a food service glove, which is not great for the environment. But uh -huh. you know, the, one of the tricks with greens is you need to massage. You always want to add a very small amount of dressing because realize you can always add more dressing. The guests can always add more dressing, but you can't take it away once it's uh -huh. been there. So add the smallest amount you can and work it in, whether it's your hand or your food service glove. Tongs really can't do this. This is like a massaged kale salad, although it's arugula. And this is one of the secrets. You're breaking down the cell walls. You're tenderizing it so that when people eat it, it's going to be better for them. So you always want to get as pretty of a plate as possible. I love square remember, plates. Remember when my Dave did the massage kale with you and you were really impressed? <laughs> yeah, he was great. He was a great kitchen helper. So we're just going to put this on the plate. And then what I like to top it with, because they're not only pretty, but they're actually very nutritious and very delicious, are some pomegranate seeds. Oh, I love those. Now, I'm too lazy to open them myself. But one of the things I recommend when you buy them is smell them because every now and then uh, they are fermented, which you can still eat them. So there you have it. This is a very easy beautiful. salad to make. It's very delicious. Really and I beautiful. call it Christmas kale salad, but it's really for any time of year. And it's actually made with arugula. So we're almost at the time where our pizza crust should be ready. And so what we're going to do is talk about toppings. Your pizza, you can have any topping you want. Now, in the book, I wrote Brussels sprouts because I happen to love them. And I thought it looked really fun with the Brussels sprouts on them. My husband, Charles, does not like, he's not a picky eater, but Brussels sprouts is just one thing he doesn't like. So I'm not going to serve him that since we're the ones that are going to eat it. But I know what he does like. And so we're going to put that on top. I've never now, been favorite. Brussels sprouts haven't been my favorite either, but I don't think well, I'm cooking them right. Yeah, I think, though, uh, you know, for people that are not liking Brussels sprouts, I'd make two recommendations. One, consider trying, the, if you have a Trader Joe's near you, they have baby Brussels sprouts. Let me show you. Mm -hmm. And these are just, they don't have that funny, weird smell. Oh, yeah. These are 99 cents a bag. I buy them by the oh. case, 24. And they're really tiny. Oh. And, and they're just really, really, they call these true Belgian Brussels sprouts. And they're really delicious. The other thing I, I would recommend, that. if you don't like Brussels sprouts or any other vegetables, is consider air frying it because it just magically makes it delicious. And then, of course, we can put our marinade of balsamic vinegar and, and mustard on it, and that will mm. game change the Brussels sprouts right there. <laughs> so what we're going to be putting on our pizza are mushrooms, peppers, and onions. Now, when people tell me, oh, I can never eat a pound of vegetables, really? Because this is a <laughs> pound of mushrooms, and this is a pound of peppers and onions. When you cook it, it's like nothing. Yeah. So what I did is I air fried these for 20 minutes at about 400. 
and I put onion? a little. Is that the onion? Yeah, that, this is this is the mushroom. These are just sliced oh sliced oh. baby Bella mushrooms. Okay. I added I added to taste my favorite seasoning, which is called pepperoni spice from local spicery. That. Yeah, yes, it's really okay. good. And and you can, and your and your audience can get two free samples if they put code AJ. He's a local woman, well, he's not local to, to me, but he's kind of local to you. Yeah. He uses or, organic whenever possible, glass jars, small batch, non-irritated, really wonderful combinations that don't use sugar, oil, or salt. And so this is going to taste like pepperoni because I put that seasoning. Charles called doesn't a local like it. Spicery, right? Local spicery. Charles doesn't like spice, so I made him his own. And again, uh -huh. this is so this one cup of mushrooms came from one oh. pound of mushrooms. So I air fried his plane, but he does like peppers and onions. And again, I love Trader Joe's. When I moved out of LA, the prerequisite is they had to have a Trader Joe's. And this is one of my <laughs> favorite blends. It's literally just organic peppers and onions and they are oh. fire roasted and they make meals delicious. So let me see. Are those already cooked? Ready. Are those already cooked? Yeah, Th yeah these are oh. already cooked. Oh. So in the time that we were doing everything else, my pizza crust is ready. So I'm going to lift yeah. this up. You can, you can show now. So I've got this beautiful, I don't know if you can hear it, crunchy crust. Yeah. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully, you don't want to use metal in the nonstick thing. So there, there we have it. I mean, look wow. at this. Look at this. This is, like, this is so, of course, this is so delicious. But I'm only going to make, I'm going to break it in half because there's no reason to um, make the whole thing right now if we're not going to eat it. So I'm going to unplug my panini press for now. And now I'm going to dress my pizza. So I'm going to start. So now I'm going to take wow. my garlic roasted creamy mashed potatoes. Oh, wow, that on looks top. so good. I love potatoes. And, and this is for you, Dr. McDougall, in honor of <laughs> you. So you can you can spread as few or as many on top as you want. Oh, God, this is my grandmother used to have a word for things that were like incredibly delicious. Yeah. She said it was a taste thrill. And I'm telling you, this <laughs> is a taste thrill. Oh, so my we'll, put, God. we'll put the mashed potatoes on. That would so, be I mine. Mean, people, yeah, when people think pizza, they go, oh, we got, a, you know, no marinara sauce. I mean, you could if you wanted to. Yeah. And, and you know, sun-dried tomatoes would be a nice topping. So there we have our creamy mashed potatoes. Oh. And now, and, you know, we actually have some raw bell peppers I could use, but I'm going to use the cooked ones. And then I'm going to place those on top. Oh, God. I wish you guys could smell the roasted garlic. Oh, that looks so good. Yeah, this is restaurant quality, folks. When people have eaten this at my house, they have literally had foodgasms in their mouth. It's so I good. I'm just making sure. I by myself. Yeah, no, this is one serving. I told you this only makes two. So Charles is going to get the other one, but he's oh. not going to have the pepperoni mushrooms because he, he doesn't like yeah. spicy food. Now, right. the only thing I don't want to do right now, if you guys don't mind, just because it's, I, it's not time to eat and I don't want it to get soggy, is I finished this with a little of the smoked hickory California balsamic vinegar. It, oh. it just, it, it makes it pretty and it just makes it really, really delicious. Oh yeah. So we have that. So now we've got that. Oh, wow. And I, you know, I wish I had thought of this combination before I wrote the book. Cause then people are like, ah, I don't like Brussels sprouts. I'm not going to try it. So really like, you know, in a little bit less, a little bit more than 30 minutes, we made. AJ, all, AJ, yeah. When what made you go vegan? Animals. I love them, and I didn't want to eat them. Look at that, guys. Oh, we'll take some pictures. And so well, good. I wanted to be. I didn't know the word vegan growing up. I don't even know if I knew the word vegetarian, but I knew that I loved my dog, and I knew I wasn't <laughs> going to eat him. So I couldn't <laughs> understand why we were eating everybody else. And uh, you know, we, one nice thing about my mother. She had a lot of nice things, but is that even though she didn't let me go vegan, be, and it wasn't because she was mean, she really, you know, this was 1960. There was no information. You know, this is, the, this is look, in, even in 2021, people think you're not going to get enough protein, but she really didn't think it was healthy. Yeah. There was no internet or Neil Barnard, but she did respect me enough that she didn't make me eat anything that looked like an animal. So in other words, <laughs> if it, like I couldn't eat ribs, I couldn't eat chicken with the bone. I could eat a oh. can of tuna on a bread. It didn't look like a fish. But whenever the fish came out with the head, which Jewish <laughs> people did, forget yeah. it. The, I think one of the greatest things about being raised Orthodox Jewish 
is that I know that it's not right to think of any animals as food, but like I was shocked that people ate pigs. Like, like how is that a thing? Because that's, it's not kosher. And it's like, why, you know, and of course we know how intelligent and everything pigs are. So also being raised Orthodox, we never tasted shrimp or lobster or clams or crab or oysters. So we weren't eating that many wide varieties of meat as it was. So it wasn't hard to give up. But then the day I left home for the University of Pennsylvania, September 1st, 1977, I never ate another animal again because I was on my own. What about cheese and eggs and? Didn't have, well, here's the thing. I was allergic to milk. So dairy wasn't a problem for wow. me like it was other people. As far as eggs are concerned, I'll be honest, for the beginning of my veganism, I was a cheating vegan. In other words, if, if <laughs> something had egg in it, like bread, like at the, at the mess hall, I wasn't that militant in 1977, I would still eat it. But as far as eating eggs, I always thought they were the most disgusting things in the world. I know now that they're the menstrual cycle of a chicken, but I'll never forget when I was little growing up, uh, Archie Bunker, uh, Carol O'Connor and all in the family, that he was, it was an episode where uh, she, he said something like, what are we having for dinner? And uh, I forget, it was something like, something, she said something like, Archie, we're having, you know, um, was it liver or something or something mm -mm. oh no i know she said we're having tongue which was like so oh. disgusting jewish people ate that too oh. she goes we're having tongue for dinner archie and he goes i ain't eat i ain't eating anything that comes out of a cow's mouth she goes well what do you want he goes give me a couple of hard-boiled eggs and i'm thinking that comes out of a chicken's other area where you don't want to eat so never had a problem with eggs i always thought they were disgusting especially the yolk you know so yeah. it, it really wasn't hard to give up animals for me the hard thing was giving up sugar you know sugar and flour oh. you know that but now that i can make things without it so yeah and I, you, do. you know what the jam bars are ready i'm not going to slice them because it, uh, it, you know if you slice them too early um they'll fall apart but i'm going to take them out just to show them to you and one important thing just to know for baking anything is to just please let it cool in the oven yeah. and let it cool in the pan before you take it out. Now, I wish I could show you. I could probably get a picture and show you how beautiful these oh. are when they're done. But the, the jam beautiful. is baked right in. Oh. And these are just, they're as good as anything you can get at any bakery. And there we have it. If you, you just to, take a little. You, you need to put those in production. Well, yeah, food production is not that easy, I'll tell you. I know, but the, I know. <laughs> the thing, yeah, the thing is, is if you spend some time on the front end, you really can have, you know, lots of healthy food on the back end. So that's it, guys. Delicious, healthy, whole food, plant-based, low-fat meal, starch-based, and enjoy. And you also were overweight for a long time, right? Oh my God! I, yes, I was. I was. Um, I was close to two hundred pounds in my twenties, but I was. I was one hundred and sixty pounds when I was eleven. And when I was eleven, I wasn't five feet tall, so that is obese. That actually is obese. Yeah. Yeah. So I struggled with my weight until my fifties, until I went to the True North Health Center and <laughs> met two wow. secret weapons, Dr. Doug Lyle, doctor, who was a speaker at your conference, and Dr. Yeah. Alan Goldhammer, and they basically taught me calorie density which is now really what I teach to everybody, whether they need to lose weight or not. It's just a great way to eat. Now, were you always a stand-up comedian, like in class when you were little? Because now you're yeah. a stand-up comedian. Well, I, I mean, I, I wasn't always a stand-up. I don't do that much stand-up, but I was I was class clown growing up. Yeah, every, every school I went to, would, I was devoted class clown. Yes, I was a little, as a teacher would actually not call me a clown. They'd call me a smart ass. I remember <laughs> Mr. Anderson in 10th grade because I, I'm dyslexic and I had a lot of trouble with math. So I always needed a tutor all through high school because I transposed numbers. Remember yeah. my tutor, Bill, Bill Geller, if you're watching, I doubt it. But anyway, uh, I always had to have a math tutor because I could barely get through the math classes. What, you know, and, and I was an A student other than math. Math really br uh, brought my GPA down. But I remember he said, just forget the math and become a comedian. And I wish I could find <laughs> him today and say, yeah, you know, that was great advice for a teacher. It really was. So yeah, I'm really getting back to my roots I've, I'm studying now with the groundlings which is a improvisation troupe in Los Angeles because now I can do it oh. virtually and so that really was my first passion and love was comedy oh and you are so funny I've seen your shows and yeah. the last yeah, not that funny story. today but yeah <laughs> and he was even on uh Donnie Carson 
right? Yeah, yeah, that now that I was funny. You can go to my YouTube channel and just put Chef AJ uh, Johnny <laughs> Carson and yeah, that that, that was so say. funny. I'll never forget Johnny Carson rolling his eyes watching yeah. you and he laughing. Was such a he was a wonderful person. He really yeah, was. Yeah. AJ, thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. Oh my god, you my pleasure. Well, thank you. I think thank you made you. my favorite food on earth today. So Yeah, I wish I Dr. McDougall, I doubt you're watching, but if you were, I, I wish you would taste this because I think you'd really yeah. like it. It's so I'm good. I'm sure he would love it. Oh yep. yeah. Well, thank you so much. You're absolutely a force in this world. And I'm so proud of you doing so much good in the world and helping so many people. It's um, you are really phenomenal, just phenomenal. Yeah. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you. And I'm hoping that I always be in your life forever because it is. Aww, thank you. Well, we, ap we appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, I'm hoping to see you real soon again. Thanks. Take care, everybody, and eat your greens.